Newer daytime viewers may not realize it, but there was a time, a long time, in fact, when soaps not only entertained but informed their audiences. We still got our love triangles and catfights and evil twins and all that, but we also got stories that opened minds as well as broke hearts. Back then, there were a lot more shows on the air, and none of them were as afraid of alienating even a few fans as the four remaining ones are now. So the January's Trailblazers dealt frankly with topics that today would scare the bejesus out of the powers that be. Agnes Nixon had all my children's Erika Kane exercise her right to have an abortion and awakened one life to lives Carla Gray to the fact that Black Lives Matter. William J. Bell gave the young and the restless Catherine Chancellor a girlfriend. Claire Labine and Paula Vila Mayer used religious differences as an insurmountable obstacle in the romance of Ryan's hopes Patrick Ryan and Nancy Feldman. And at General Hospital, Lebing gave a face to the AIDS epidemic, that of Stone Cates. By the time he was diagnosed as being HIV positive, the audience was already enamored of Michael Sutton's character, the ward of local mafioso Sonny Corinthos, and first boyfriend of Robin Scorpio. We'd watched Kimberly McCullough's teenage alter ego grow up on screen, so it was a big, big deal that we approved of Stone for her. Heck, we liked the coupling so much that we were always rooting for the kids to overcome the objections of her Uncle Mac to be together. At first, the youngsters had practiced safe sex, but since he had tested negative for HIV, they threw caution to the wind, a decision they'd both come to regret more than words could say. When Stone came down with the flu, he got retested and learned that he was HIV positive. How could he possibly tell Robin? I put you in danger, he wept. You can watch the full scene below. Oh, Robin, I see you. From that point on, Stone's condition worsened with a speed that underscored the cruelty and relentlessness of the disease. As it progressed from HIV to full-blown AIDS, and Robin found out that she, too, was infected, the patient was given his options by doctors Alan Quartermain and Tommy Jones. You can watch below but each course of treatment seemed worse than the last, and neither was guaranteed to extend Stone's life, much less make it one that he feel was worth living. In the end, Stone elected to spend his final days at Sonny's penthouse. There was nothing to be done by then but love him. He couldn't even take comfort in the sight of Robin. AIDS had intensified the effects of Stone's CMV retinitis and stripped him of his vision. At least he could feel Robin's hand in his, and hear her voice as soft as a caress.